Hi everyone, today I've got here a pot grot. This is the accompaniment to the Swamp Caller Shaman for a Cruel Boys army. If you see my previous video, there was the Swamp Caller Shaman. So I painted this guy up very similarly so that they, they match on the battlefield. So the way I did this was like most of my Cruel Boys, underpainting with Xandri dust, uh, then some Agrax Earthshade, some Rack White, I won't do it again, I'll put a link over there somewhere for how I did it for the Swamp Caller, so I don't have to rehash that. But effectively, first of all, underpainting and then contrast paints, similar to uh, underpainting Grizzle, however you pronounce that <laughs> method, uh, Slap Chop. If you've seen those, you know the general gist of it. I've got some very nice new contrast paints here that I really enjoyed, such as that orange and that magenta. So. Take a look, see what I've done, and let me know what you think. With all of that pre-shading out of the way, it's time to get started. I've got here as my first step, the lowest part of the model, which is the skin. I'm using Plague Bearer Flesh. If anybody in the comments has uh, experience with the new Gut Ripper Flesh and how that looks for your Oryx, please send me a picture. I'd love to compare. So this is going to go all over this guy's. Uh, skin, there's quite a bit of it with his arms and his sleeves. So I'm just going to take my time and go around and get all of his fleshy bits. That green is drying nicely and you can actually see how that pre-shading has really done all the work for me. I've got the highlights and the lowlights on the hands and on the head there and that's it for the skin. So I'm going to move on. If you turn them around, there's a lot of detail here. So I'm going to be very careful about how I do this. First of all, I'm going to go for his vest because it does stick out in between all these bits and bobs. For his vest, I really like this Nasdreg yellow over the Xandri dust. I'll do it on the front here first so you can see what I mean. But this color over that makes a very nice, uh, dirty leather kind of color or dirty cloth maybe so i'm going to do that for his little vest so i'm going to be very careful at the back here to pick out all of the spots where i can see that vest in between everything else the reason i'm doing this one in a lighter color and two before everything else so i can go over with darker colors if i do make any mistakes Moving on to the next step, I've got here some, how do you say this, Garagax sewers, and this I'm going to use for the wooden details on the back. So I'm going to be very carefully applying this to anywhere that's wood, uh, and avoiding any of the doodads and bits and bobs that I'll be painting separately later. I'll also, at the same time, oh, is that wood or metal? wood. I'll also at the same time use this for these, I want to say, coals or wood fire bits underneath here, uh, and anything else on the base. While that's drying, I don't want to work on anything else close by that wet paint, so I'm going to move on to the front of the miniature and paint this cauldron full of goop. So I actually have a few shamans and pot crots and I want them to match. So this shaman I painted his goop in his little uh, soup pot there with striking scorpion green. So I'm going to do the same striking scorpion green in the pot of this one. That way when I paint my next uh, shaman and pot crot I can use a different color to differentiate their pot and soup mix in order to avoid confusion on the tabletop. I still absolutely love this color. Let me get a bit more of my brush and paint that all the way inside his little melting pot of goop. So this is yeah, striking scorpion green.
Moving on now, I'm going to be doing all the metallics. And with contrast, I like to use a siliconum gray, especially for my cool boys, because their metal won't be bright and shiny. It will be dark and grungy. So this is going to go over the pot. I use a siliconum gray instead of black templar, because I want that highlighting to show through. And black templar is a bit too dark straight out of the pot. Uh, but the siliconum gray actually worked quite nicely. It still leaves a bit of dinginess, which is what I want from that undercoating. So you end up with like a dingy looking pot, especially if you don't let it pool <laughs> like I'm doing there. At the same time, I'm going to paint all of the other metallic pieces. And this little pot crot, he's got quite a lot. Um, a little bit more on my paintbrush there. Around the back here, he's got some pots and pans. Yes, baby cat. Sorry, my cat wants attention. Uh, he's got pots and pans over here, as well as plenty of hooks all over the place. So I'm going to go around now and just grab all of these metallic pieces. Oh, yes, I got you. Urgh. With the help of my cat, of course. Got quite a lot of dark colors on there now, so let's try, let's try just brighten it up. I've got here some Gore Grunter fur. This is one of my favorite warm brown contrast paints. So I'll use this for, let's say, his trousers, if you can see it in there. I honestly love this color. It is so vibrant, this red brown. Um, in addition to that, I'm going to pick out one of these things on his back. So my plan is all of these to do in various different shades and just have fun playing around with the different colors. After that, I'm going to take some Blood Angels Red and this I will do. He's got, it's hard to see, but on his stomach he's got a little plate metal thing there which I'm going to do red just so that he matches the scare shields of my fellow cool boys as well as he's got a potion bottle there and I'm going to go around and just get the parts of the bottle ignoring the parts where the ropey bits are again to tie him in with the swamp caller shaman Earlier on, I messed a little bit of that sewer color on that little piece of cloth there, so I'll use a darker color for that one. This is Wildwood, and this will go over that quite nicely and hide that mistake I made. Contrast that so we don't do dark color next to dark color, yet let's use some Agaros Dunes for the next one. So we've got a nice light piece of fabric next to the darker one. For the final leather tone, some snake bite leather for that last uh, little pouch of his over there. That way all of the pouches have a different brown tone on them. You can never have too many different shades of brown. For that little bit of greenery sticking out there, I've got some orc flesh, and I'll just use a little bit to make those stand out nicely. And you know what? Just because I got this paint, my wife made me pick up Doomfire Magenta for her models, and it's such a bright pink, and I just want to try it out, so let's go for it. <laughs> it doesn't fit in with anything else, but I kind of like it. I'm still giggling at that, but you know what? Let's embrace it. I've got here some, what's this, magma droth flame, and let's continue on the trend of bright colors. <laughs> okay, this guy's definitely... Making a statement. <laughs> oh, 
oh, this guy just looks ridiculous now. <laughs> okay, pretty much there. Let's grab some Dark Angels green for this, this root here. It's much darker than the Orc flesh, so it looks a little bit more earthy, I think. I could have used a brown, but honestly, this guy's got enough brown on him as it is. And then finally, after a bit of touch-ups, I like to use Athromatic Blue uh, over two coats, just for all of these stringy bits on my Oryx. I think it ties in nicely once it's got two dry coats. So I'm going to go around, and everywhere that there's any of these stringy bits holding things up, I'll put two coats of Athematic Blue, just making sure I let it dry between coats. And with that, I've done a quick little base on him. There's some uh, brown texture paint, some wash, and some grass tuft. So I won't go into the detail there. Base your mini however you want. I've just based him so that he looks very nice next to the Swamp Caller Shaman. And with that, they are done. This pair is ready to cause some havoc on the battlefield, power up the rest of the army. I had a lot of fun with this guy, especially these <laughs> bright paints. Uh, if you like what I've done here, please let me know in the comments. Uh, if you've got any tips or suggestions for how to do my other models, I'm really open to that. As well as, I'm a very new channel, uh, please think about subscribing. Every time you subscribe, YouTube sends me a nice little email and it honestly makes my day that people are enjoying what I'm painting. So with that, have a great day further and I'll see you again soon.